Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a compressed air launcher. We've got a couple at school, we use them for all sorts of things, but the most popular with the students of any age range is uh, designing and building their own rockets before they get to test them across the schoolyard. Alright, so to get started, get yourself down to a hardware store. Bunnings is really handy for this because they sell almost everything you need and they've got these sections of screw together galvanized pipe which is perfect for this project makes the whole thing a lot easier to build you're going to want four sections of pipe you can choose the length you're probably looking at around about fifteen dollars per piece there's some three elbow joints a round end piece and a quarter turn valve if you're running this with a class and cost isn't an issue get a couple of extra sections of pipe I'll explain why later there's a few different valves you can get um, this is the one you want, nice long handle and quarter turn, and this is the end cap that you're going to need. So here you can see how it all fits together. Starting with the, uh, the round end cap, there's a valve, a bit like this one, that has been, there's a hole drilled in the end cap, and then the valve is pushed through, and I think we might have used Araldite. Um, on this one I can't quite, quite remember what secured it on and then just using PTFE tape or plumber's tape on the uh, on the joins and then screwing it together the elbow joint I find that this sort of U shape for the chamber that's going to have the compressed air stored in it um, works quite well just in terms of stability so when it's outside you can just rest a foot on it and, um, and you or the students can use it there's the quarter turn release valve, so that's open and that's shut, ready for um, the compressed air to be pushed in. And then you've got another elbow joint and your nozzle or your muzzle. And so the by putting your foot on here, so you can adjust the trajectory relatively easily. I'd recommend when you do go and buy the pipe that you get a couple of extra sections. So what happens is that when the students are trying to, if they're building rockets to go on the, uh, on the launcher, then if you've only got the one exposed piece of pipe, you'll have all the students crowding around there. By having a couple of spare pieces, then students can um, use those in order to get the fuselage of the rockets to the right shape. And that just makes life a lot easier in terms of managing the class and spreading the students out. So to make the, um, the paper dart or rocket, I normally give my students a um, choice of different colours and thicknesses of card or paper. And they take a piece of card and they roll it around the muzzle of the launcher so they get the dimensions right. And they can do it in this orientation or they can do it in this orientation and I leave that up to them. And so the idea is to make it fairly, fit fairly tightly around the nozzle, but not too tightly, um, because then they might end up, when they're actually out ready to launch, having trouble sliding it back onto the muzzle. They want to make sure it's a reasonably tight fit without being too tight. Okay, so that's the, the fuselage. And then you can just run a bit of sellotape down the edge there. All right, so that's the fuselage. And then the simplest way to make a nose cone is just to fold one end of the, of the dart over and tape that down. Like so. And that's a really basic one. Um, normally, I would, the students would spend a lot more time on it, maybe make a nice um, conical nose cone and probably put some fins or wings on it. Um, I tell the students that the ideal um, balancing point, center of mass of the, of the dart, should be about two-thirds of the way along, so roughly where my finger is here. And the idea is that that keeps it in, a, um, in a, an appropriate trajectory for as long as possible in flight. And uh, I explain rifling to them, and that if they can make it spin while it's in the air, then it'll have a much more stable trajectory and will go a lot further as well but I tend to leave, them, leave that up to them as to how they try and achieve that. All right, so that's the basics of it. So once you've made the launcher, you'll be very keen to get out and test it. 
If I'm with a class, I'll make sure that the handle's in the upright position, as you can see here, and that there's no air in the chamber before they slide the rocket onto the muzzle. And then it's just a case of attaching a pump, and you could use a hand or a foot pump, but what I find much easier is to use a, an air compressor. The great thing about that is that you can rapidly fill up the chamber again after each launch so you can get through most of a class within about you know 10-15 minutes certainly very easily. So when it's all connected you can see that it fills up very quickly. The chamber is not all that large if you think about it. Okay and then we're ready to launch and so I'll just make sure that any students are standing clear of the the muzzle and often get them to give it a little countdown. So what you want to do to launch is keep one foot on the frame just to keep it steady and then you get the students to release the quarter turn valve quickly and smoothly um, so that all of, the, all, all of the air gets to expand and push out the muzzle as quickly as possible. So another thing you might want to try doing with the launcher is um, firing potato. It makes a really good giant spud gun. And if you want to do that, you're going to open the valve and then you're going to take a potato. I've got a really old one that's been left lying around in the classroom for a while. And you're going to force it down onto the, onto the muzzle and then you're going to use a clamp stand or a metal pole in order just to ram the potato down um, to the, the base of the muzzle. Okay, so we'll give that a go. Not sure how well this will come out on camera. And I normally Think about how far it's going down so I don't get it right down into the elbow joint. So I can see roughly how much of the clamp stand I want to, to be down through the pipe. I have to do nicely. And then close the valve. Pop some air in the chamber. And I'll just move the, the angle so we don't give those people in that car a nasty surprise. Okay. And then you're ready to launch. We all know the great thing about science demos is bigger is better. And so then can start experimenting with different sizes and shapes of launcher and this one's a, a particular favorite of the students so we normally launch um, objects through the, the longer muzzle and we had a shorter muzzle made up as well so that the uh, you could the students could test to see if there's much of a difference in range in muzzle velocity etc with um, different muzzles so that one's exactly the same principle it's got a valve at one end, quarter turn release valve, and you just thread the muzzle into the other end of that quarter turn release valve. All right, well, I hope that's been helpful. Enjoy.